two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 241 of the of the security podcast here on In30. We're, as everyone else is calling this, quarantine content. I think that's the name, the name that everyone is using. Not that we really need to be quarantined because, I mean, security is security and we sit in front of a computer every day anyway, but still. So let's say hi to Tom. Tom's over there. Hello, everyone. So... We were just prior to the show, we were just talking about coffee and all the coffee that you should be drinking. Now is the time to learn how to brew your own coffee. I really Indeed. think that's a good thing. So Tom turned me on to the AeroPress, a uh, little $30 thing that you can make. You can take it anywhere as long as you get hot water and you go from there. And it is pretty, it is awesome. I don't know how Tom does it, but. So I either use, and I. I am going to do We Are Live content. So there we go. I've got my, my AeroPress here. And I, I did shatter the bottom, unfortunately. Um, but quite literally, uh, as our audio listeners can hear, I apologize for that. But it's a, a little rubber plunger that you quite literally put your coffee in, invert it, plunge it down, you're good. Uh, I do recommend, I love the AeroPress, but I do recommend getting, getting away from those paper filters because A, they're annoying b they're not reusable and c you got to make sure you have them everywhere so that that's kind of annoying i like this uh like stainless steel mesh metal filter totally washable dishwasher safe uh i've had this literally since i bought the aeropress like six years ago so pick yourself up one of these yeah it's five bucks it's like double the cost of a pack of 30 filters or something like that but worth every penny and i have literally only ever used this one uh, also paper extracts coffee oils and if you don't need to extract the oils you probably shouldn't they're tasty well so in your case so you told me to do that and i and i think that was absolutely the right choice and then i took it to baltimore with me and i was making it and i just really wish i had the paper ones because i had a constant like i was making and making and making and i just mm -hmm. throw it out throw it out throw it out and i couldn't because of because of that but yeah. anyway that is the thing since i drink a lot of coffee at once like you said uh i bought many years ago Cusinart will sell you a grind and brew which will grind the coffee beans directly into the filter pot and and brew it and it's one of those and i and i stress this make sure it's the one that takes a lot of beans not that you have to measure out because that's the last thing you want to do is you want to have to sit there and measure them out as a hopper you put half pound of beans and you're good to go for me it's like three or four days but for most people it's like a week because <laughs> we we both admit that we drink a lot of coffee here so, and, and i do have to say I, I know we're not the coffee podcast but this does need to be said <laughs> ground coffee is fine if that's the stuff you got it's fine but if you're really looking to up your coffee game grinding right when you <clears throat> brew or right before you brew is honestly the best option uh it's fresh it seals in the flavor better uh i highly recommend a burr grinder and if you don't want another kitchen appliance or you don't drink all that much coffee you can get again live content Tom is in his kitchen it's cool. finding us a hand grinder. A hand grinder. So <laughs> these come in like a variety of different uh, styles or brands or whatever, but it's quite literally a burr grinder. Put grounds in the top, you get, uh, or you, you put beans in the top, you get grounds at the bottom, and it's got a nice little hand crank. Now, this is kind of a pain. If you're making a lot of coffee or like one French press of coffee, you're going to be grinding and grinding and grinding for years but if you're making a cup of coffee in your aeropress it's fine it's quite literally like four minutes of grinding call it a workout if you want to uh and yeah it's great with this setup with the aeropress and the hand grinder no electricity just needs some hot water and you're good if you're camping it's the honestly one of the best ways to get a really good cup of coffee without carrying a bunch of equipment Oh, I mean, we say this now, and again, not to be the coffee podcast, but I know a lot of us uh, stop on the way in the morning and having to go, which I may actually save me money because that requires me to get in my car and go somewhere. And okay, the what the two dollars in the morning, and the two dollars in the afternoon may actually be cheaper than all the coffee I buy. But 
if you want to do it, you can practice this. So when things do get back to normal, uh, you can save that $2, $3, $4 coffee at wherever uh, when you don't really need it. And, and like I said, to make just, if you just want a significant better cup of coffee, just even the $12 Mr. Coffee that does the four pots and your own, even the, the house brand coffee, whatever it is, the shop, right? Publix, Kroger's, Whole Foods, Amazon, whatever is going to be significantly better. Just get a little, just watch the water and you will be fine. And and you will make a much better cup of coffee. People have complimented me by how good it is. And there's nothing special there. I use filtered water and it b- grinds right in and it brews it. And every once in a while, I change up the, my coffee beans and I'm good to go. So if, if you do want to make a lot of coffee, um, like if I'm making a pot of coffee for myself or for mm. friends instead of the, the single cup AeroPress style, um, French press, French press, it's cheap, it's easy, they are foolproof, grounds in the bottom, hot water, wait for, I wait four minutes, but wait for some time, maybe a pinch of kosher salt if you're feeling crazy, it, that does actually amp up the coffee flavors a little bit, take some of the acidity off, uh, and then plunge that guy down and you're done. So, no, look, it's, uh, it's coffee, tea, get yourself some, I, I want to say some uh, health antioxidants, is that what it's called? Yep. Anti something. I don't know. If it's brewed, I drink it. I've got a delicious glass of iced tea right here. Uh, I enjoy all kinds of brewed beverages. Why yeah. take a <laughs> why take a bite of my chip there? Anyway, so our main show tonight is we talked about this last week, is Bitwarden. So Bitwarden is password manager. Um right now we're just gonna say it's we still like LastPass. I still want to say that out loud. We still like LastPass. It's uh, it's a commercial product. It's there's a big company behind them, and they are still good to go. But when we first started, we said LastPass is good because they have that free option. One password was was good, but if it was good, if it was like on one device, and then we got mobile, and it was now a second device, and there was all these problems. LastPass was just free everywhere. And they had a premium option. One password charged per device. And then there was this company, Dashlane, that was like crazy expensive. Then all of a sudden, everything changed. LastPass saw that they everything went in app purchase monthly subscriptions. So every month they want three dollars. Um, one company wants three dollars. One co- uh, everybody now wants monthly subscriptions. And if you add the monthlies up, it, it ends up being like forty to fifty dollars per year for whatever it is. And that's a lot of money. That's a really hard sell to say, hey, in addition to all the other subscriptions, we want you to pay $45. LastPass still has a free option. It is still very, very good. But I'm afraid that la- that free option is going to go away sooner than later. And so we found Bitwarden. They have a free option. They have a paid option. Uh, Tom will talk about the open source, but it's open source. It has all the stuff that we like. And so for the last couple of days, I've tried it for the last week. I can tell you how to import it and everything. It's worked and I'm actually really happy with it. I, I really like the features of Bitwarden. One thing that they specifically call out uh, is that you can add the TOTP codes, you know, the, the six digit codes you get on your phone through Google Authenticator, Authy, stuff like that. You can actually add those directly to the password manager. Now, it, because we are a security show, keep in mind that if you put your two-factor authentication codes into your password manager, if somebody breaks into your password manager, they now have your passwords and your two-factor codes. They're all sitting in the same place. So depending on what you're doing, that might not be right for your particular threat model, for your particular view on security. Uh, but for most things, like if it's if it's a two-factor authentication to, to get into like some gaming site to play one game that you play once in a blue moon and no one actually cares, it's fine. It's fine. You can put your TOTP codes in there. Uh, I keep backups uh, you know, of my TOTP codes in a secure location. Um, but you know, if, if you just don't care and you want to keep it all in one place, Bitwarden does support that. I I did see that. And I was a little, I'm not there yet. Like you said, I am not, I am not there yet. Um, what I do is a little old school. I, I, I never printed them out. What I did is I just took a screenshot of them and I put them on my server on the encrypted side and, and when it went that way and I, and 
so that was the other thing. Take a printout of all the codes, put it in an envelope, seal it. So if you know it's been, obviously it's been tampered with if it's open. But I saw that and I said, wow, that that is actually a really nifty feature to have that specifically there. So so before I get into the to the transition, is there any other things we want to talk about before open, the open source part, the self-hosted part? It it just seems nice, honestly. It it works the way it's supposed to. Um, one thing that kind of you know another thing that differentiates it from the pack is that uh, with LastPass, you're kind of locked into a okay. Here's the domain name. Here's a username. Here's the password. Here's the folder I'm going to keep that in. But what if you use that? that same combo to log into other sites. Like uh, there are, uh, you know, certain gaming platforms that have a separate domain for support, but you log in with the same credentials. Uh, what this means is that, you know, I've got to, I've got to go to LastPass. I got to click that button, type in, all right, I'm going to type in the name of the thing. Okay. Copy the password, paste it there, type in the username, hit enter. It's just kind of a pain. I really wish I could tell LastPass this you know, username password combination is valid for this domain and also this other domain. Bitwarden has that built in. You can actually specify multiple different URLs where that password can be used and it will do the nice password thing, uh, password manager thing and autofill all the credentials. Uh, there's even a premium feature to autofill the TOTP code if you've stored it in Bitwarden under that, uh, you know, little segment. Um, Ooh, that I want to say that may be really nice and I'll yeah. give you an example of that in a second so what you're describing I did notice I did notice uh I I, I don't exactly know the name the URI receptor whatever it is there is something there LastPass yep. has it but you have to manually map them so you can do exactly what you're saying Bitwarden does but it does take time and it's one of those I don't want to waste that time Bitwarden yeah. for whatever reason I've noticed does a very good job of handling that now what it doesn't do is in LastPass the little asterisk the little red asterisk is next to the login box Bitwarden I think it's just still up top by the by the in in your extension bar which to me is fine I get that but it's really nice to be to have it right next to there that you can click. I, I don't yeah. I, I don't want to I don't want to get a little too nitpicky on it. But for look, it, for we all I've always said this. The problem with open source software is that it doesn't it doesn't look as pretty as it should. This looks really pretty. Like it really it does. Really does. It really does. I mean, uh, it's not winning Apple Design Awards, but Compared to other things, like com compared to Key Pass or whatever it is, this is worlds better. This is significantly better, and and I that was my first thing because I have to test this out and then I have to share this with my family and friends and say this is good. So it needs to be pretty. I can't recommend them Key Pass because Key Pass is not pretty, and yeah, I don't want to say hard to use, but it's hard to use. Yeah, one one thing that could work against Bitwarden if you're introducing this to family members or people who are less technical, or even if this is just their first password manager, or especially if they're coming from something like LastPass, is that Bitwarden does have a lot of dials. They've got a lot of options boxes. It's great because you know they let you customize the experience and it does a whole lot of stuff right out of the gate. Unfortunately, all those boxes and stuff might look a little bit more complex than something like LastPass, which is, I don't want to call LastPass bare bones, but it's kind of bare bones, right? It doesn't have nearly as many features as its competitors, and that's fine. It's easier to use. Uh, Bitwarden, if, if you get used to the UI, it is literally just as easy to use. It's a password manager, and it works in the exact same way, but it can be a little bit intimidating when you first open that dropdown. Yeah. So, so let's, uh, I, I want to start getting into it. So look, I, I said this last week on the show, it's, uh, it's blue versus red. And so all my passwords are stored in LastPass and I'm like, okay, now, now what I have to do, I have to keep both going. Like I really have to keep both going. So I finally bit the bullet and I, I did the export and, and Tom was, was right there with me when we did the export. First off, LastPass exports in plain text. I just FYI. That probably has to happen. It's probably like yep. this weird thing. So if you're going to export it, deal with it right away. Like, don't wait. Yeah. 
Do do not leave your LastPass export file. Like, A, don't do this on a shared computer. Do this on yeah. a computer that you own, you control, and you trust. Because when you export it, you are quite literally dumping your entire password vault, your entire password database, into plain text as a downloadable file. So if you've got, like, backups or something running at the time and it might get swept up in there, might want to wait a hot minute. Um, now, you know, is it is it completely dangerous to have it exported as plain text? No, you kind of have to do that because to import it, it needs to be into plain text, right? It, it needs some way to say, okay, well, here's the password in the password field. We're going to put it over here in this other manager. Um, but deal with it then and use a secure deletion utility. Eraser works great on Windows. You have the command utility shred for any, you know, Unix system, Linux system, Mac shred works just about everywhere. Um, yeah, I love shred. But that was, look, that was a little scary, but they walk you through. So it says, please choose your password manager of choice. And there were a lot of them. It was, LastPass was there. Uh, it, it did require a lot of like little finicky steps, but it wasn't like this crazy thing that I had, a, that took me a long time. Um, then I, so from there, then it told you how to save. I did export it. And like we said, export in, in plain text. I went to import it and I got this weird error. Like error can't import 10,000 character limit. And Tom and I were talking about it. It turns out my PGP code uh, exceeded the 10,000 character limit. So I had to go through and I had to figure out what were my long notes. So LastPass has a thing that lets you store attachments and I don't use that. So some people may use that. I tried it once and it didn't work. So I said, you know what? I'm done with this. So I never used it. However, uh, so I deleted all those. The, the Like I said, the PGP key was the thing, the culprit. I deleted that. I tried again and it worked. So just be aware. If you have a lot of notes with really long things in it, 10,000 characters is a lot of characters. But it, something like a PGP key will screw it up. Yeah, and you can you can go through and Bitwarden does support attachments. So if you want to like take that stuff out, dump it to a text file, and then upload it after the fact, totally good. You're absolutely good with that. So so I did that. I made that work. That was fine. I went to all the the browsers. I downloaded the extension. It's a recommended extension by Firefox. I think it's a top extension in Chrome. So those are the ones that you wanna that you wanna keep. As I just logged into my browser right now, I just got an email that said, hey, new login. So it's doing that. What I couldn't find that LastPass has is um, uh, country country restrictions. So you can say LastPass only log in the countries. I don't think it has that. Right. And uh, while that is an okay feature and kind of a you know belt and suspender security approach, mm -hmm. I honestly don't know how effective it is. Uh, because, Correct. you know, with various proxies and vpns and this stuff is so ubiquitous and changing your location on the internet is i don't know like changing your pants right it's not instantaneous but it's not exactly hard to do either uh so if you if you said don't allow logins from china cool jump on a vpn show up in belgium and then log in uh, i've actually been bitten by that before when when traveling um so yeah uh you know, it, yeah, it's missing, but I, I don't know if it's really a big deal. So, so you log in, okay, and and it walks you through it. It has both face ID and uh, th uh, fingerprint reading, so that's good. Right now, I'm in the free tier because I wanted to test this out. I, like I said, I manage my father's last pass and that requires me to know this, like the back of my hand. I be, when you do tech support for somebody else, they own you. So especially with passwords. So I need to make sure that this absolutely works and I'm really going to tell him to make the jump and I have to do it for him and everything else. So I look, I'm loving it so far. It, it does everything I need to do. I set up the two factor. It's working. I set it up on my iPad. The iPad figures it out as uh, in, uh, to let you log in. It's done the, the credit cards. Not on the iPad, but on the desktop, I'm able to add new sites. It picks that perfectly. It generates the secure passwords. So it really has the same par uh, parity as LastPass. Like, everything is there. Yeah, I, I was honestly really surprised and impressed that 
everything just kind of worked. There was, there was no weirdness about anything. It all just kind of clicked into place. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I, I haven't quite yet fully moved over to Bitwarden, but uh, yeah, it's going to happen. And it'll happen sooner rather than later. So, so the one thing that LastPass... So a couple things. So LastPass has um, the... If you don't... If we don't hear from you in X number of days or you're reported missing or something like that, how do you... LastPass has an option to help you get back your master password if you meet all these requirements. So one of those things is a premium membership where you have to check a box that says, I understand the risks. Um, I have a family member. This is who it goes to on the event that somebody pushes it and waits X number of days and everything else. I like that. So for someone like my father, they're using it as a password manager, not as an encrypted storage session. They they just need the passwords remembered. It's not this mission critical thing. Uh, my dad has the username and password always checked so you could just log in, which again is bad, but he does it. <laughs> it's supposed to be for that. And so he... And so I have his master password and I told him, do not ever change this. If you get an email, call me because they will never ask you to change it. And he changed it once and he didn't let me know. And we had this big problem. So I, Bitwarden does not have that, but I'm looking now in the family plans. And we're going to talk about that in a second uh, on what that does, because the next thing I want, I do want to talk about is sharing. So before I get into sharing, and I, I know Tom wants to talk about the self-hosting, um, is there anything else on the yeah, basic features? I no, think that's it. Okay. They, they do the same password. I'm um, looking here. They do the same password deep dive. So if you're, I guess they use, have I been pwned to see if your password is there? They do the reports. It is a premium feature. That's a good thing. Look, if your pass at this point, once you got to the pa the hang of the password manager, I would, if you're not doing anything now, change all your passwords. Just let them generate. Uh, try, try your best there. Uh, make a group that says this is the stuff I have to enter on my TV. So like your Roku Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi passwords, maybe not make it crazy, but the ones that like your banking passwords, maybe that's a good idea to start. Again, we've spoken about this. Go slow. Start where you know all your passwords and just start adding them to Bitwarden. If it works, then start thinking about changing them. Take a step. Take your, your thing that you can just do. Remember, you can always do reset passwords. Reset the password, get it, do whatever you need to do, and go from there. Um, so they have the reports. I imported the data. It gives, it tells you how. I see, I see about tw thirty or forty different things here, stuff I've never heard. Uh, but anyway, export it. You can export the vault. It tells you how to do it. JSON and CSV. So you can export JSON or CSV. I guess that's a good thing. And yep. It took, oh, it took the LastPass folder. So at some point in the last few years, LastPass started trying to assign folders, which I think is a really good thing. It it actually, it kept that folder structure. It kept the identities. It kept the secure notes. The only negative I said was that the PGP key can't be stored there. Uh, I'll have to find another way. I'm not terribly concerned. So uh, you want to talk about self-hosting? Yeah, so... The the big thing that sets Bitwarden apart from LastPass, other than like, all right, cool, there's some incremental features here, uh, is that Bitwarden is completely open source. The server's open source, the extension's open source, the command line application is open source, the mobile applications are open source. The whole thing is built completely in the open. And as a piece of critical security software, that's kind of the barrier to entry here. LastPass came on the scene pretty early for password managers. It, it kind of made its mark as you know one of the one of the heavy hitters when it came to personal password management in a secure way. Uh, unfortunately, we all kind of gave LastPass a pass, ha, huh, um, because it was early on the scene. There were no great competitors, and honestly, storing your passwords in the browser on the keychain wasn't great anyway. Um, so we said, all right, it's not open source, but they have proven to us in so many ways and gotten these audits and we trust it. Bitwarden, you don't have to. They are running the code that is on their GitHub account. And if you want to run the code that is on their GitHub account, they give you an installation option. Now, this, 
isn't to bury the lead. This isn't as clean as I would have liked it. It's not literally run it and that's it. Um, because it, it is a big web service, right? Uh, it's not it's not particularly intensive, but it does have a lot of moving pieces. It's got you know databases, an API server, uh, stores, you know, checking stuff. There's there's a whole lot of moving pieces that goes into this solution. And they could have made this fire and forget easy. They didn't because they do want you to pay for this. Uh, so one of the things they do have you do is go to a please let me host this myself page. What this page does is it says, hey, give us your email address and we will give you an installation code and key. You cannot install it in their default installer. There are ways to work around it, but you cannot install it with the default installer without going to this page, putting in your email address or a email address, as I'll explain here in a bit, and getting this key. They do that for... I imagine reasons relating to security notices. They don't want you running an out-of-date version of Bitwarden with a critical vulnerability. They want someone to notify, which is, it's great, it's admirable. It is absolutely not how you build or source or host open source software. You should give me the software and it should work out of the box. This prevents that. Now, it doesn't absolutely sink my faith in the project. I'm just kind of unhappy with the way that they're managing certain things. Running it yourself also doesn't give you all of the features. There are still features locked behind a license key. There are features locked behind this, this premium paywall or this enterprise paywall, depending on how you're running it. Where, yeah, when you run it yourself, you are getting the base features for free. But to get anything really useful, like organizational sharing or, or things like that, or... FIDO UTF key support, right? To, to do your one-touch YubiKey or, or Titan security key or whatever, that's a paid feature. Um, and they do require you, even in the self-hosted version, to pay and obtain a license key to unlock this feature. I don't like that at all. Now, that said, this is open source software. You can fork it. You can remove their barriers. You can absolutely hack around this problem, which is great. It's a fantastic option. It's just really unfortunate that somebody who's running this themselves, hosting it themselves, and you know, providing all the infrastructure themselves aren't getting the full experience without paying. And I get it. It's a business. Developers deserve to eat. Software creation is hard. I do it for a living. I understand this stuff. But it's kind of antithetical to how open source is supposed to work. That's my major gripe with this. Can you do it? Yes. Is it great? Yeah. Do they deserve to get paid? Absolutely. Do I want them to force me into paying for open source software that I'm running on my own hardware? No, absolutely not. And there are plenty of companies that are built this way and operate this way. Red Hat's probably the biggest one on the table. It's just kind of annoying to me coming from a world of open source software and running smack dab into the middle of something that feels really, really needlessly commercialized. I mean, so so you come from a developer's end where you want to self-host it and everything else. And for me, I, I, I think I said this to you. Do you think they're doing this to make sure that you pay for updates? Do you think this is a paid update issue? I, I don't think it's a paid update issue necessarily. I, I do think it's a paid, please pay us. We have families. We need to put food on the table issue, which is entirely different, right? They they are developing this stuff in the open, and if you do want to work around it, I, I want to stress this: if you do want to work around it, if the company goes under, we need to like retract some stuff and build this into a totally different project. You can. It's not trivial, but you can absolutely work around the barriers that they put into place. Should we have to? I'm of the opinion that we shouldn't, but I understand the argument that. Devs got to eat. I, I think the better thing is they should have had this at the top. Like yeah. we, they, like if you're gonna do this, the the self hosted is not self self hosted is self hosted, but you're not getting the premium features for it. Be aware yeah. before you start down. The, they down the they make a big stink on their front page about oh we're totally open source we're so open source that it runs in Docker containers. Cool, that's great, that's awesome. What they don't say, just like you said, what they don't say on that marketing page is, yeah, you can self-host the free version. But no. Come on, guys. G give me yeah. something here. Get, be, be just a smidge honest. Like, even if it's in tiny text, like under, under the, the big Docker logo that you've got on your page, just say, 
yeah, by default, you're hosting the free version and you have to buy a license to get the premium version or you can fork the project. Like, cool. If you're going to come out front and say that on your marketing page, great. That's awesome. But I honestly feel slightly misled by all the marketing material, which says, yes, you're running this whole Bitwarden on, uh, you're running the entire Bitwarden project on your own computer, self-hosted, self-contained, you're the master, except not really. It's just kind of, shady is too strong of a word. I'm just a little bit miffed. I mean, for me, I like I was telling you before, I to, this doesn't, be, this doesn't affect me. What affects me is, like I said, the I want something to be free always. I want something like LastPass started free on one device, but not mobile. And then it was everything is free except two factor with YubiKey. Like they they start they, they're starting to figure this out. Bitwarden says they're free forever for what features I think are it works everywhere and TOTP codes. That's fine with me. And everything I have for free right now, I really like. I want to pay them one to support them. Um, I want to work with, I do want a YubiKey. I do want the ability to share, which is there's a way to share in the free version, but it's not worth it. I rather, I, they want $10 a year or a that's, family organization, a uh, dollar yeah. a month. That's 12 bucks a year. They're, they're incredibly cheap. And, and to be completely honest and open, I am absolutely going to pay for this. I am 100% going to pay for this and they do deserve every penny they get. This is a great product. So I want, so I want to be able to, if I have to justify spending money on this, I, I, I do need to know some stuff, but the free version right now, and that's fine. If the free version is going to, this is what's free and this is what's free forever. I'm also, I'm happy with it. Um, if I, I, I just don't want to see what happens with LastPass. Ten dollars a year becomes fifteen dollars a year, becomes twenty dollars a year, then becomes whatever else it becomes, and that really scares me because I understand all this stuff is hard and people need to eat and everything else, but I, it's really hard to justify to people until we solve this authentication problem that this is what we need to. This is we have to pay fifty dollars a year or whatever it is, fifteen dollars subscription a year to to log into your passwords or don't remember them. And I don't know what that answer is yet. I'm hoping some sort of alternative comes soon enough where, where we just have a YubiKey everywhere and we just push the button. This $20 would just authenticate you to literally everything and we're done. Like that's it. I'm happy. Or face ID or whatever it is. That's the dream. So I, I don't know. We're clearly not there yet, but any, uh, I don't know. So that's it for it. We're right on time. So I'm going to be happy with that. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to apologize for last week. I really do like Office 365. I really, really do. And that wasn't meant to be an ad. So if you say like, hey, why are they advertising? We're not. It was really good. And it's literally just a love letter of an episode to a product. And so, and, and we've hated on Microsoft before. So this is us saying <laughs> oh, Office God. is awesome. Yes. Uh, we, we, we kind of owe it to them, to be honest. So we do have a WhatsApp group if you want to join us. Um, uh, find us on Twitter. Find us somewhere. We'll throw you in. And we will go from there. So, again, the news has been quiet. So this is what we got until something happens. So, anyway, everyone, we will see you next week. See you, everyone. Yep. Um, right. GarageBand did not up. It's just barred.